In a time when an outbreak in equine influenza is imminent in southeast Queensland, horse owners and veterinarians can't be too careful. Earlier this week, a possible case of equine influenza presented itself. Gatton veterinarian Dr Lily Potter was called out to a horse, Buckbeak, who had been showing respiratory signs. Dr Potter met with Buckbeak's owner, Poppy Pomfrey, and heard her account of his respiratory signs. While at the farm, a nasal swab was taken from Buckbeak. Dr Potter sent this swab off to be tested at a nearby diagnostic laboratory run by Dr Rowena Ravenclaw, a renowned biochemical technician. Dr Ravenclaw processed the swab and returned the results to Dr Potter. Dr Potter had trouble understanding the results and so proceeded to phone the lab for further explanation. Hello, Dr. Ravenclaw. Yes, hello. Hi, this is Dr. Lily Potter from Hogsmeade Veterinary Clinic. Um, I received the results of the tests you performed on Buckbeak swab, and I've looked up on it a little bit, but I'm just still a little bit unsure about the whole reverse transcriptase um, real-time PCR and the CT37. Ah, well, I remember. I'm sure you remember from second year vet science what uh, PCR is. But yeah, I'll give you a quick refresher anyway. Um, so to begin with, PCR is the amplification of a DNA sequence, which in this case belongs to the virus. And because the virus consists of RNA, we use a reverse transcriptase to change it to copy DNA so we can detect it with PCR. Okay, so real-time reverse transcriptase PCR which is what we used, is slightly different as it allows us to see the quantities as the process is occurring instead of just the presence of the virus at the end of the process. Um, we use a probe and primers to bind to the viral co copy DNA and when bound the probe releases a dye which fluoresces and the amount of fluorescence indicates the amount of copy DNA. So therefore more fluorescence means more copy DNA segments. Okay, but how do you then determine whether the horse actually has the virus? We have a standard sample of equine influenza virus, which we use as a template to develop a scale, allowing us to determine the viral load depending on what the CT value was. From the standard sample, we use tenfold dilutions to produce six samples with differing viral concentrations, which we converted using logs and graphs into the scale comparing threshold cycle to log starting quantity. With the threshold cycle of 37, we simply find where the line meets 37 on the y-axis and correspond that to the quantity and therefore viral load. The CT, or the cycle threshold, is therefore another way of measuring the quantity of viral copy DNA. So the PCR is run at a maximum of 43 times and if no fluorescence occurs during that time, the RNA is free of the virus. The earlier the fluorescence occurs, the more virus RNA is present in the sample. In this case, the PCR fluoresced after the 37th cycle, which indicates a low level of virus. Using this CT value, as well as the scale we developed, we determined that the viral load was 20,887 genomes per microliter. So we can safely assume that the horse is shedding the equine influenza virus? Well, because a horse is showing respiratory signs and we identified a viral load, we can assume that it is shedding the virus, but because the amount is quite low, the horse has probably only just acquired the virus and the viral load hasn't reached high levels yet. So why did the viral isolation come back negative? Well, we know that the viral isolation is not as sensitive as PCR, so real-time PCR actually has 10 times the sensitivity of the viral isolation and viral isolation can therefore give false negatives. And because it is not very sensitive to influenza virus, um, we also have the process of viral isolation may cause mutations to the virus, which would prevent it from being recognized. As equine influenza is highly contagious and a major issue for equine industry, 
Rapid identification is required to ensure treatment and containment of infected animals. And so real-time PCR gives us an advantage because it shows immediate results, whereas virus isolation takes days to even weeks to find a result. Okay, I understand it now. Oh, okay. I better go and give the owner the bad news then, thanks. No worries. Thanks, bye. Hello, Poppy. This is Dr. Potter from Hogsmeade Veterinary Clinic. Hi, just wondering how Buckbeak was doing today. Um, well, he has a bit of a cough and his nose is running and like his eyes are, wat are watering as well. He also has a bit of a temperature and he seems like a bit stiff and reluctant to move. Oh, and he hasn't been eating as much as usual. Is that a bad sign? Well, I received the results from the nasal swab I took last week and unfortunately Buckbeak has got the equine influenza virus, which is horse flu. However, we do seem to have caught it at an early stage. Uh, are you sure it's horse flu? It couldn't be something else? The process the lab goes through to identify the virus is very reliable. We start with the nasal swab and we add specific markers which can only recognise that specific virus. And the mixture goes through a cycle of heating and cooling, and this causes the virus to be duplicated over and over again. And when there's a certain amount of virus present, as a result of the replication, the markers glow, and that indicates that the virus is present in the sample collected. So you can understand why I'm so sure that Buckbeak has been infected with influenza virus. Okay, um, how, do you, how do we know that we caught it early? Well, it all comes down to how much virus was in the original sample. We determine this by identifying how many cycles of heating and cooling the process, is go process goes through before it starts to glow. And the sample from Buckbeak didn't glow until it underwent a large number of cycles. So that means that the original amount of virus we detected, or we got from Buckbeak, was quite small. Because it took so long to glow. Okay, so what about my other horses? I have like all my horses together and I can't afford for all of them to get sick. Horse flu is highly contagious and we already discussed that Buckbeak is currently shedding or transmitting the disease to the environment and the animals around him. So there is a chance that your other horses have picked up the virus from Buckbeak. But I do suggest that you isolate Buckbeak right away just in case they haven't already gotten the virus. And keep an eye on the other horses just so you can pick up on early signs of disease. Okay, so what can I do to help Buckbeak recover quickly? There is actually no medical treatment for equine influenza once the animal has been infected. There is a vaccine which I would recommend you give to your other horses once they're free of the disease and you know they're free of the disease. But as for Buckbeak, all we can do for him now is treat the signs. So we want to keep him isolated in a stall if possible and keep him on a high plane of nutrition which will help his body to fight off the disease better. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your help. Um, is it okay if I call again? if anything else goes wrong? Of course. It should all be fine from now on though. Alright, thanks. Bye Poppy.